there's a new boogeyman in town and it's not the record labels. Can you believe it? Who is this boogeyman? I've been telling y'all first and foremost that there's many other boogeyman and boogie women we do equal opportunity evil around here that are taking advantage of artists messing up the game and y'all are gonna slowly start to see it this is gonna be one of them there's a lot i have in mind i'm not gonna lie but i'm gonna let y'all figure that out because people are gonna think i'm hating if i say some of this stuff too early but what am i talking about live nation mm. live nation in this case are screwing artists over but i'll just read the headlines of course explosive new documents unearthed on live nation and Ticketmaster. that's a hell of a title it is a hell of a title. What's going on? <laughs> and I know many of y'all might say, well, I don't do anything with Live Nation. I don't do anything with Ticketmaster. How can they impact me? Well, this will impact you. Trust me. It's messing up the game for all artists in one way or another. Here's the details. What happened? Leaked internal documents show Live Nation has used a system of secret kickbacks to make concerts and other events appear less profitable than they really are. This is going to affect you, by the way, as an artist and as a consumer, an artist who loves other artists and tries to go to shows. This allowed Live Nation to pay artists less mm. undercut other promoters mm. and build a monopoly over live events the documents part of a lawsuit against live nation were made public by new jersey representative bill pascal a, a ticket master critic shout out new jersey boy shout out new jersey shout out newark South 13th Street to be specific, y'all Y'all who know what's up, y'all know what's up. Live Nation and other promoters split the cost. So we'll try to put the business model on the screen so y'all can walk through it, but I'll just explain it because they have like a nice little graphic. But the traditional business looks like this. You make ticket sales and there's a 50-50 expenses split between Live Nation and co-independent promoters, right? So you have these promoters and you have Live Nation. There's supposed to be a 50-50 split for the expenses. That's like the venue, primary production to put on the show yep. and then once they pay for those costs together they're supposed to split the profit from the ticket sales mm -hmm. that's what it looks like sounds simple right we go 50 50 on the expenses then we go 50 50 on the thing that brings in the profit which is the ticket sales what's actually been happening they're splitting the expenses a Jacory, you take care of this, right? And you're 50 50. I got 50%. And then I'm going to take care of this. So okay. we got $50,000. You spend 50,000. I spend 50,000. Okay. So it seems. But it turns out, Jacory, you evil, bro. <laughs> because when you spent your $50,000, you spent it with people that you have connections mm -hmm. with beyond just that cost. Don't so you just me. told me you spent $50,000. But after I sp you spend that $50,000, you get a little kickback. They give you collectively across all vendors, $20,000 back. Mm -hmm. So really, you only spent $30,000. Me as your partner, I thought you you spent 50,000, I spent 50,000. Based on that breakdown, really, we should have both spent $40,000. Mm -hmm. I could have saved $10,000, but you saved 20. Selfish, bro, selfish. Hey, man. So this is what's, that's one of the main things. So they're screwing over the promoters, not just the artists. We haven't even got to the artist yet. Yeah, actually, yeah. And, and this is the thing. Artists be thinking that they're the only ones who get screwed over in a lot of this stuff. They hear music executives talk about certain stuff and they're like, oh, you're on the side of the streaming platforms or you're on the side of this. And they don't understand that last conversation we just had. The value that where other people get value in the industry. They don't even know when people that they're talking to are also getting screwed over and they're making them an adversary when they could have an opportunity to make them an ally. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's why it's important <laughs> to actually understand what's going on so you can end up in a great position <laughs> but after live nation screws you over or after jacory screwed me over in this deal we promote and then we sold our tickets we're supposed to in some of these scenarios actually split tickets with the artist but this is where it gets really weird because one if we increase the value of the expenses by the way so if i told you this is the weird part if i told you that this is going to cost a hundred thousand okay. dollars and we're splitting it 50 50 all right but really i'm saving money on my fifty thousand dollars that's already bad enough but what if not only did the split between us two as partners get missed used i actually told you a higher cost than it did in the first place so it really costs eighty thousand dollars not a hundred thousand dollars so it's not fifty thousand fifty thousand it really was supposed to be eighty thousand anyway and me saying that it's a hundred thousand dollars not eighty thousand dollars takes twenty thousand dollars away from the pool that i'm supposed to be sharing with the artist mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when we talk about profits. Because if the artist is spreading profits with me, you, and themselves, now they're not getting money until our expenses are finished. So hopefully y'all understand what's going on there in terms of like just the actual detail of it. We saw this coming for a minute. Well, I'll say me and Ja'Cory have conversations about this for a minute. The other day we were talking about how I met a guy when I was early in the game. I wasn't even dealing with artists yet. I was just throwing a festival at the time that was up and coming. And one of the guys who owned the venue told me that, yeah, Live Nation was taking up everything. And one of the first artists that I did work with and managers, the manager was telling me how Live Nation was buying up everything, locking things down, small venues. Those venues that look all independent and nondescript, nah, Live Nation got them too. It's a little Live Nation certificate in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah on the wall next to the to the uh, health code. <laughs> like, oh, you got an A and you got ownership by Live Nation. Mm-hmm. So you have these secret deals where I'm getting money back if I'm Live Nation and I'm inflating the cost of all this. I'm screwing people over on both ends. I'm a bad partner to everybody. That's what they're saying, mm-hmm. all right? The issue with this is this also speaks to the conversation from an artist standpoint of why we don't make enough money from shows. Yeah. Our expenses are increasing. We're making less money, so we have to raise prices, right? Which actually cuts some of our fans out of the equation. And then some of the fans from the experience, if you like going to shows, again, you're being cut out of the equation or you're having to pay more, even if you have the money. So you're now just spending more of the money that you have that's taken away from other areas you could be spending that money. Mm-hmm. Like this one decision has such a domino effect and we can't speak enough of when you have these bad actors at a high level, how much it impacts people. You know, this is just alleged, by the way, all of this from Live Nation because I'm not digging into their details, right? (laughs) However, if these things are true, that is a bad use of partnership, man. That is a breach of trust. Especially with, you know, a company that's, if not a monopoly already, is is, is very close, 98% loaded at least. Many people believe it already is a, a monopoly. We were talking about that. We were talking about it off camera. We were like, damn, who is Live Nation's competition? And it took us a long time to even get to like AEG, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Which I think sells a lot, right? So that's the thing that artists also have to understand is, and it goes back to the point you were making earlier. On mm-hmm. the surface level, it feels like promoters and artists are being strong-armed and, and and they're being taken advantage of. And of course, yeah, they are. But in reality, this affects the entire like show and touring side of the industry. Like it's yeah. like, cause now you got to assume that there may have been, you know what I'm saying? People who were trying to do a good job in these different departments that also weren't understanding why things were starting to seem more costly and things like that. Yeah. Especially as a person that doesn't, you know how much it should be. And you no, know, lo and behold, it's this company that no one can seem to knock off their, their pedestal that is just you know, violating you. And I think it's crazy. I think it's a smack in the face to the whole industry because I don't know, man, I just think we've been letting Live Nation get away with a lot of shit, bro. We let them get away with the Travis Scott concert stuff. Nobody called them out. <laughs> and, and put them to the fire. <laughs> I just think the trickle down effect to your point of, cause we gotta assume and like every artist isn't gonna find out about this. Pro- promoters might know, but every artist is gonna figure this out. So how many artists do we think that are making irrational decisions around their shows, violating their fans to try to make a bottom line that they're not really gonna hit because it's, it's a little bit rigged. And it's like the artists and their entire fan base loses in the situation and the team of people working for him loses in the situation. Meanwhile, the, the main villain just gets to continue just living in, in corporate obscurity, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Which I think is crazy, bro, but yeah. I wanna drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem. And not just any old fan problem, but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral, have a lot of success, get a lot of streams, but still not being able to know Who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fan simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code, no labels, zero, two. All right. Now, look, 
the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code no labels zero two to get initial access for only one dollar. Let's get back to this episode. When you're dealing with a, the entertainment industry, it's so many moving pieces and it's hard to be an expert at all these things. This is why we talk about like the weight an artist has on them to understand the business or the manager has on them to understand the business and why it's so hard to just do this alone, right? Without having teams. It's easy to say, hey, I just want to be DIY if you also want to have limited success or say, let's just that yeah, that's your version of success. I want to be in my room and I might want to have a certain amount of streams and make money that I can live off of or just add some extra money in my pocket or also you might want to just like sell direct and make a decent amount of money or whatever and have a closed relationship with your fan base but for the artists who do have a dream of building something bigger and more substantial you're going to deal with more and more people yep. right this isn't a i can do in my room if you want to do shows you have to deal with more people if you want to have a certain amount of collaborations with other artists like get certain deals with brand sponsorships there's people on all sides of this business that brings so many level of expertise that's required to deal in each category yep. it just is what it is is and live nation like he's like man i don't know what's going on back there i just know that they told me i felt like my tickets um were too expensive for me to pay from a fan side or i felt like it was too much money they were charging me in expenses i see someone here who said house of blues was charging 15k in expenses to artists every night just classic squeezing to print for cash house of blues 15k is crazy yeah. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> Pearl Jam was right in 1995. Taylor and her fans were right a few years back. These mergers never end well for artists or concert goers. Yeah, I mean, in this business, because you also have the alleged scalping of their own tickets with Ticketmasters, yeah. right? This just creates so many gaps of information between all these different expenses that you can cite, all these interactions with fans that you have none of the data on. Like, they just create this massive black box. How do you deal with that? So merging on the entertainment side in that way, especially if the companies choose not to be transparent, it's hard to say that it's not going to end up bad. Even if it's not the people who did the initial business, did the initial mergers, merger, maybe not the current CEO and exec team. When they sell it off, it just creates an environment that makes it easy to F people over. And that's what's interesting about music, man, is like if, if if a company gets in and, and, and takes a stronghold, I can't even say fast enough, because this has been a long play for Live Nation, but it's like, just the nature of the business means that you probably won't have any serious competition for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's a long time for you to affect practices and cultures and, and norms, and maybe even the thing that made somebody want to rise up to take you down by the time they finally get to a position to where they can even attempt to compete, you, you've made it the norm, and it's just like the standard by that point, you know what I'm saying? Yep. People are um, used to it. That's exactly what you want. Yeah. Uh, people to get used to the BS because it just makes the environment easier. There's nobody, yeah. you know, making a fuss. <laughs> Everybody's here for it because that's what they came into. Most people aren't going to see past what's already there or feel like they can change it. I want to read this quote. They said, basically, Live Nation can present venues with a choice. If you cooperate, you'll get extra hidden revenue, right? That's those little kickbacks, that little secret money that's getting exchanged, allegedly. But if you refuse to cooperate, Live Nation will allegedly work with your rival or may just buy in to the market to compete with you directly. They're not giving you a choice. It's an offer you can refuse. Hey man, how about I do this deal with you and you get some money. As a matter of fact, I even give you a little sweetheart deal. But if you don't, I'm gonna come in and compete with you. And boy, you know you don't have my resources. Or I might just go work with your rival and consistently work with your rival. And you know I'm bringing in about 80% of the business into this market. So I could just, you know, drain your swamp that way. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. You probably should just go do this deal. Just make it simple, man. Nobody's gonna come to your rescue, which is another thing. Nobody's coming to the rescue of anybody in the music industry outside of the artist. Y'all don't know how much so many other people are getting screwed in different aspects of the business. But artists are the ones with, with the voice. Yep. But the artists aren't standing up for anybody else because they don't even know anybody else is getting screwed over anyways. We get sold a narrative that the artists are the only ones suffering at any point. This says at any point, Live Nation can dial up or dial down rebates to reward or punish. These secret rebates let companies like Live Nation hide their profit margins, which makes it harder to prove they are running an illegal monopoly. I tell people all the time, people who have legitimate monopolies work hard to appear as if they don't. Mm -hmm. 
the people who don't have monopolies work hard to make it seem like they do. We're number one. We're number one. I'm the best. I'm the richest. You know what I mean? <laughs> the people with the money is like, ah. Uh, That's a couple other people that yeah, do man. just as good as we do, man. I don't even want to be on your list. <laughs> y'all do what y'all do. Yeah, bro, you're the richest. Do your thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's the way it goes. So keep that in mind. Live Nation, we'll see how this goes one way or another. If they are doing what's being accused of here, which we don't know. Generally speaking, like we do consistently create an environment that enables these things to happen and harder to detect by creating like these consistent mergers with companies on a on big level. Not saying there's not a lot of value to it, but it's like, how do you regulate it on both sides to make sure that everything stays on the up and up? Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think the other part of it too, because you said something interesting with the ticket scalping, right? I mean, the tic- what ticket scalping to the, the touring industry is, is equivalent to Napster to the music industry, you know what I'm saying, like years mm. ago. I think that's the big thing artists have to remember is like a lot of these companies, especially these major corporations, if they're having money issues, the first place they're going to look to fuck over is you and your fan base because they don't have to deal with the social repercussions of that. Your tickets are the ones that went up $30, $40. Mm. Your show is the one that's not selling out, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? All these things that, like I said, Live Nation and companies like them can just step back and be like, hey, we violated you to make sure we were okay, but you'll figure it out. You'll be all right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't make it this far anyway. You'll be good, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the way I got to imagine they thinking. Cause, you know, like Live Nation, I mean, there's artists of all sizes, but a large majority of them are the major artists. So they're probably thinking like, either the artist fan base won't notice, which is not true. We've seen every Facts. level of artist fan base complain about shows over Facts. the last year or two, or they feel like they can't go anywhere else. So I think it's a it's a it's a huge message to the to the industry, right? Is one, you know, as much as I love artists and producers and things like that, it's like there are other areas of the music industry that need good people that want to make sure everything runs smoothly. We can't mm-hmm. all be the next Drake and the next Fifty Cent, bro. Like you know, somebody got to be like, all right, bro, I, w- I want to go make sure the touring side is straight for people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Let me go get in over there. Yeah, because if not, that's how you get exactly this, bro. Like I said, you get the people that want to have that, they get the power. They control it and they sit pretty because they know that it's going to be a long time before anybody even comes close to being able to come compete with, with yeah, what they build. Way and harder. Do. Way yeah. harder on this side of the business. I'll just say real quick, people might wonder, if I'm Taylor Swift, I'm Beyonce, and they scout my tickets. Basically, they just help me sell out. Why do I have an issue with it? Yeah, my show, my tickets are up there for $200,000. I mean, not $200,000, $200. So they're up there for $1,000, whatever the price is. But hey, I made my money the moment they sold out, even if Ticketmaster did scalp them in this situation. Cool. Why do I have an issue? My issue is I want my fans to not complain, like you said. Mm-hmm. Right? Like Beyonce, why are your tickets so much? Taylor Swift, why are your tickets so much? So not only is there the PR perspective of me charging a lot for tickets, even though on the other side, it also creates this perception of demand, which is nice. My issue is the PR. If I want to run the numbers up that much, I want to get that value because this is value that's all them. You got to remember. So if I put my tickets on sale for $20 and then you take them all off the market and then you sold them for $120, you just made $100 off of me that I'm not even involved in. So I get potential bad PR for my fans and I don't extract the financial value. And I get a lot of fans who can't necessarily make it to the concert where I chose not to extract all of the financial financial value I could for my fan base because I wanted to give back or I just wanted them to be able to experience me where I can make more deposits and experiential brand equity moments. So then they want to continue to buy from me in the future. So you're really messing up multiple facets of my relationship with my fan base by just hitting the lick and being this middleman. Yeah, I remember going to a uh, show for Isaiah Rashad like a couple years ago. I think it was for the Sons Tyre album. And it was literally exactly that. Like they posted show was sold out, went in easy at least 80 seats. <laughs> Still free in it. And I remember seeing people tweet about that. Like, damn, they sold this as a sold out show. And, you know, people on the outside who couldn't get in started learning. And then, you know, now you feel the type of way as a fan. You're like, damn, bro, my homie in there told me it was 80 full seats I could have picked. And, and you let live, well, I don't know if it was Live Nation, that's a limit. I say that. But you let whoever is controlling this show paint this perception that it's sold out for what? For a dollar? What about us, bro? Like, what about, yeah. what about our connection? And that's why I say, bro, those are all the things that these companies don't care about. But that you would definitely feel the the, the fallout from. <laughs> yep. 
100 percent 100 percent we'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section below this is yet another episode of no labels necessary podcast i'm brad man shot and i'm Corey, and we out peace appreciate you for watching if you like content like this you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com and the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.